The cosine law can be viewed as a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that for the Pythagorean theorem, if we have a right triangle, if this angle is 90 degrees, and this is A and this is B, then it says that the size that is opposite to the 90 degrees, which is called the hypotenuse, satisfies this equation, C squared equal to A squared plus B squared. The cosine law says the following. Let's suppose that this angle is 90 or is any other angle. Then let's suppose that it's not 90. It could be 90, but let's suppose that it's any angle and that this is A and this is B and this is the size that is opposite to the angle that we have. Then we have the following equation. C squared is A squared plus B squared and then, uh, so far, it's like the Pythagorean theorem, but then it comes minus 2 times AB times cosine of the angle. Notice that cosine of 90 degrees, 90 degrees is here, this is the terminal point, 0, 1. Cosine of 90 degrees is the X, which is 0. And therefore, when this angle is 90 degrees, we just have the Pythagorean theorem. But in general, this is the cosine law. Notice that a difference with the Pythagorean theorem is that in the Pythagorean theorem, the C has a name, it's, it's called the hypotenuse, the A and B are called legs. Here in the cosine law, uh, there is no reason to label A, B, C. Essentially, what it says is the following. If you have a triangle and you know an angle, then the side that is opposite to that angle, the C, C, the side square is equal to the sum of the squares of the two sizes that are touching the angle minus two times the product of those, of those two sizes times cosine of the angle. Then uh, it just work for any angle. It doesn't have to be labeled like A, B, and C. Is you have two sizes and the angle in between, the third one square is the sum of the two sizes square minus two times the product of the two sizes times cosine of the angle that we know. Let's see an example. If we know that this is three and this is two and this is 20 degrees, let's solve this triangle. Then in this case, if we call this C, this A, and this B, then we have that C squared is uh, A squared plus B squared minus two times AB times cosine of the angle. In this case, C squared is just nine plus four minus two times three times two, times cosine of 20 degrees and therefore c is a square root of 13 minus 12 times cosine of 20 degrees a common mistake is to say that 13 minus 12 is just one and then is one minus cosine of 20 degrees this is not the case remember that the order of operation indicates that you need to do first this product. Don't do this minus this. Right? Just do it completely in your calculator and when you do that, you get this number. Then we have C. Now, how do we find the angle? We can find any of the angles using the cosine law again. Let's suppose that we want to compute this angle theta. Then we know that uh, 2 squared is equal to 3 squared. I'm applying the cosine law for this triangle. And then this, we know, I know this side, I know this side, and I have this angle. Then I know that this square is equal to this square plus 1.31289 square minus 2 times 3 times 1.31289 times cosine of the angle that we don't know. 
this side squared is equal to this side squared plus this side squared minus two times the product of this side with this side times cosine of the angle. And then we can solve for cosine of the angle. I'm going to move it here to the left. And I said cosine of theta is just three squared plus 1.31289 squared minus two squared over uh, two times three times 1.31289. And now we can do this. And this is equal to 0 0.85354. And how do we solve for the angle? We do, we use the inverse function theta is just the inverse function of cosine, which is denoted by cosine inverse of 0 0.85354, which is 31.4 degrees. And this is approximately 31.4 degrees. And I know how to compute the other angle. One way to do it is we can use the fact that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180. That means that this angle here is just 180 minus 20 minus 31.4. This will be 128.6 degrees. Okay, uh, an important observation is that in general, we can generalize this procedure of how to find the angle. If we have the three sizes of a, of a triangle, if we know that this is A, this is B, and this is C, and we know this angle, then we can find theta just by doing cosine inverse of, here it goes the sum of the square of the sizes that are touching the angle, A squared, plus b squared minus uh, the other, the size that is opposite to the angle, divided by two times the product of the two sizes that are touching the angle. Let's do an example that uses this formula. Uh, we can find this angle, let's call this angle theta. And then uh, we have that theta is cosine inverse of, here we have the square of the sizes that are touching the angle, it would be 25 plus 49 minus uh, the, the square of the other size, 16, over two times the product of the sizes that are touching the angle. When you are doing this, make sure that you put a parenthesis for the numerator and then divided by a parenthesis for the denominator. And then here you get approximately 34.048. We can get this angle, we call this angle beta. Then we have that beta is cosine inverse of uh, 16 plus 25 minus 49 over 2 times 5 times 4 over 2 times the product of the sizes that are touching the angle. And then in this case we get 101.537. If we want to compute this angle, let's call it gamma, we can do two things. We can either say gamma is 180 minus 101.537 minus 34.048 because we know that the sum of the angles must be 180 therefore this angle is just 180 minus the sum of the other two and this will give us 44.415 degrees or we can also use again this formula and says if this is gamma this is cosine inverse of uh, 49 plus 16 minus 25 
over 2 times 7 times 4. And when we do this in the calculator, we get 44.415. We get exactly the same. Okay, this is how you solve triangles using the cosine law. Uh, it is useful when you have the information, when you have the angle that is between two sizes that you know, you know the size, you know the angle, and you know the, si the other size, and the two sizes that you know are touching the angle that you know. Then in this case, you can use the cosine law. Or also, it is useful when you know the three sizes. If you know the three sizes, then uh, you can use the cosine law using this formula to find the three angles.